It seems to me like it is time for one of those inevitable vlog-style videos where we don't actually do any forging, but we talk about some of what's going on in the shop and some things that are going on outside the shop. Now, what am I talking about outside the shop? Well, here's a little hint. If you don't recognize what this is, well, this is a shipping container. The kind of thing that they use to ship goods across the ocean on big container ships. A lot of people just refer to them as a Connex box. So I've been spending most of the past week leveling the ground and getting ready for these containers. Had them delivered just the other day, and now it's time to see what I can do with them. And one of the main reasons that I decided to go ahead and invest in a couple of shipping containers is because of this shed that is across the way from the blacksmith shop. This place is a complete disaster, way too much stuff in way too small a space. What was once well thought out storage for nuts, bolts, and other hardware now has about twice as much stuff as it was ever intended to hold. And there's still lots of stuff in here. Now these empty shelves up top that you might think have plenty of room that I could have moved on to, this morning were completely jam-packed with boxes and boxes of sanding belts. And now all of those abrasive belts are inside the container and this makes them much easier to find because the boxes were all stacked on top of each other and you had to move the box on top to get to the belt grit that you really wanted that was on the bottom. And some of these boxes are 50 or 60 pounds up on a high shelf. It was a real nuisance. This is going to be much simpler. But the other reason that I really wanted to bring them in here is because we have rodent problems, specifically squirrels and chipmunks. And those squirrels and chipmunks like to nest in boxes. And filling up a box with a few hundred dollars worth of sanding belts with squirrel's nest and squirrel droppings is not good for your belts. And since I had many boxes of these, I figured just making sure these belts didn't get trashed, didn't get destroyed, was actually equal to the value of the container. Now inside the container, I have plenty of room for some shelving that was just disassembled and stacked up. I need to get more shelves from them. This is some that a buddy of mine had that he wasn't using, but I'll build some shelves or find something to use. And this makes this container quite useful and will be much neater and cleaner, not to mention rodent-proof, insect-proof, and waterproof. In our area, these are about $2,500 a piece delivered, and that's a lot of money. But if you compare that to building a good quality shed that is rodent-proof, insect-proof, waterproof, and ready to go the day the materials show up on the site, it's not a bad deal. And like I say, just safeguarding those belts and not get letting them get trashed by squirrels nesting in them is actually going to pay for the price of the container. Now what then becomes of the disaster of a shed behind me? Well, luckily I have lots of stuff that's been living out in the weather where it's really not good for anything that can move into that shed. All of these buckets full of potentially useful materials like we're using for the hook of the week will end up being emptied out and the shelves in the shed will become storage for all this scrap that is too short to go on my other stock bin. And this is where my parts tumbler lives. It's been in here for quite a while and it's an ideal place for it so I don't have to listen to it over in the shop when I'm running it. And it will continue to stay in here. Now my big stock rack out here on the outside is just going to go ahead and stay out here. The material doesn't take too much damage. It's up off the ground. The snow melt and the water drains off quickly. And stuff that's been on there for five or six years still isn't so rusty that it can't be used. And that's about as long as any material ever lives on there. Most of it cycles through pretty quickly. And even though I have just barely started the process of moving things into those containers, I already have a little bit more space in the shed, even though it looks trashier because things have been moved over to get to other things. And it's the usual process of moving and cleaning that you've got to make a disaster before you can finish the job. But I've also been able to move some things that were here in the shop that were kind of in the way, but they had no place else to live. You know the old saying, a place for everything and everything in its place? Well, I've got way more things than I have places, and now I've got a place to put those things. So before long, both of those containers will be full, 
And all of those extra materials in the buckets that fill up with water and dead leaves and dead bugs and all that kind of stuff will be on shelves where I can go through it and find materials easier so I can actually make use of some of that stuff that's completely useful. It's just so disorganized that it's hard to find it. And I'll separate one or two shelves just for things that are hardenable. For the known tool steels and the old leaf springs and the coil springs and the hay rake tines and the sucker rod and all that stuff. And I'll have a nice organized place to put that so it's not really in a big heap. I've got a cabinet for it, but the cabinet's got way more in it now than I ever thought I'd put in it, so it needs to be better organized. Now as a result of that, I haven't been making videos ahead like I probably should have been. This video should show Wednesday morning, which I believe will be the 7th of August. And when this video posts, we will actually be in Carbondale, Colorado, preparing for the 2019 Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference. But why is all that relevant? Well, if I'm not getting videos filmed ahead of time like I try to do, and I'm a little bit behind on that, and I'm going to be out of town, I may not have videos for the rest of this week. I will try to get something done while I'm at the conference. Hopefully tomorrow before we leave, I will be able to do a hook of the week for next Sunday, but I can't guarantee it. So if you see a little lag in videos, I haven't dropped dead or anything. I'm just blacksmithing. And as with so many of these vlog style videos, I've got a little bit of mail to open. And of course, I've already looked in this box because it came a couple of weeks ago. I just haven't had a reason to, to open it. And this is from Three Rivers Forge, one of the viewers out there. And on top of the box, I've got a very nice Three Rivers Forge t-shirt. Thanks very much for the shirt, but the box is bigger than that. Underneath the t-shirt, a Three Rivers Forge hoodie which I think I'll wait to wear this winter. It's about 90 degrees in the shop today, so a hoodie might just be a little bit of overkill. But the big contribution to shop efficiency that he included in this box is a tool that I hadn't thought of before, and I don't think I've seen anybody else using it. He mentioned it to me once and described it, but then he also made one and sent it to me. And quite simply, it's a drill press vise but that's not how you use it. This is actually meant to be used over here at the anvil. I need to weld a hardy stem on this so that it drops down in the hardy hole, but my understanding on how, what this is for is for work holding. You can put something like a hook in here. Of course, it's more stable once I get the hardy stem on it. And then you can punch the hole and you don't have to worry about the hook tipping back and forth. And I'm sure you can use it for a lot of other things. If you're doing some kind of decorative chisel work on a piece right here at the anvil, this would hold it very solid and would be a great hold fast. So that's a very ingenious idea. So thank you, Vaughn, over at Three Rivers Forge for your generous donation to the shop. I think we're going to get some good use out of this. Hopefully in our next Hook of the Week video, we'll actually see this vice in use. Now, people have been asking about the Ribbon Burner Forge project. Haven't forgotten about that. It's still in the works. I'm still acquiring parts for it and don't really want to get started until I get everything else. I just wanted to make sure people knew I was going ahead with that build. And it is still going to happen once I have all the parts and once I have a little bit more time, which after the blacksmithing conference and as fall comes on and there's a little bit less land maintenance to do up here and I'm not putting in shipping containers or cleaning out a shed, I'll start to have a little bit more time and hopefully we'll get that ribbon burner done before winter sets in. Now there is some exciting news as far as the channel is concerned. One of the videos, the one on quieting the anvil that has done very well in the past, has done exceptionally well in the last week. And as a result, we are now up to 82,000 subscribers as you watch this video. That is phenomenal. I didn't expect that to happen for several more months yet. And that 100,000 goal seems to be getting a little bit closer. Not that it changes anything, it's just kind of a nice milestone. And for those who have asked in the comments section on that video, how is this working a year and a half, actually more than a year and a half later? Perfect. It hasn't changed a bit. The bolts haven't loosened up. Nothing shifted. Everything is worth working perfectly. And I mention that because I get a lot of comments down in the comments section, sort of to the effect of, you didn't do it my way, therefore it won't work. Well, if you watch the video, you saw that it worked at that time, and here, a year and a half later, it's still working. If you really want to spray your anvil down with spray foam insulation because that'll make it quieter, hey, I guess that's your business. 
but I'm not doing that in my shop. Okay, nobody really actually made that comment, but it's not too far off from some of the ones people have made. Before we wrap this video up, I thought I would just touch base with what I plan to do in the future, what kind of videos are we going to be doing. And the big thing is that while making videos, it's kind of like blacksmithing. When you first start off, it seems like you got to learn this much. After you learn that much, you realize, well, you got to learn this much. And after you learn that much, well, it's more. And the more I learn about video making and the more I edit videos and the more I watch other people's videos, the more there is to learn, the more there is to do. And the more effort I put into a single video, the fewer videos I can make a week. Now, I think in general, the video quality is getting better and the content is getting better and my editing is getting a lot better. I know I've still got a long way to go. But trying to do a video a day simply doesn't work, which is why we're down to three a week. And three a week is getting to the point that it's getting kind of tough too, because I'm spending most of every day either in the shop filming a video, trying to get customer orders out, or I'm up late at night editing videos, and then up early in the morning to answer comments. And this is not going to be sustainable for much longer. So I think three a week is fairly soon going to become two a week, but I'm hoping that those two a week will be much better videos, much better edited. To do a video a day, it means you come into the shop, you set up the camera, you shoot a video, you take down the camera, and you just have to get it done. There's no time to correct anything. If it doesn't come out right, that's tough. That's the video you shot. To do three a week, and if you're a little bit ahead, there's time to make up some of these scenes. There's time to do something a little bit different if something didn't come out right. But I think often the videos would be much better if I spent some time working on the projects ahead of doing the video, which would take an extra day or two, and then spend a day or two actually doing the filming of the video. Now, it's not a full eight hour day. It might be two hours one day, two hours the next day. But that way I can film the video, film what I think it needs, go in and watch it that night and say, oh, I wish I had had this shot or this shot. And if I have to go back the next day and reshoot a scene or add something else or change the narrative, it really isn't that big a deal unless I'm trying to maintain a specific upload schedule. So I think I'm going to try and relax on that. It will add to my enjoyment somewhat. And no, I'm not getting burned out on doing it. I actually am getting more excited about doing it and more excited about doing better videos. But that just means I have to put a lot more time into a given video. So I think two videos a week might be a reality. Now, I know people like regular content, so we're going to try to stick with the hook of the week so that there is something coming out at least once a week, and then bigger videos interspaced where we can. And of course, this won't be an overnight change, and there's always going to be some little video like this one today that I just thought, I ought to make this video, let you know what I'm thinking, let you know what I've been up to, let you know why you might miss a video later this week. So videos like this are most likely going to pop up from time to time. But as always, I've talked on way longer than I should have. Those of you who stuck with it right to the bitter end, I really appreciate that. And for everybody that tuned out halfway through, well, you'll just have to figure this stuff out on your own. I do hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.